um, building or something like that? Um, both. I'll explain where we came from and what we do uh, to use this way. Lambeth Housing Access came from a conscious attempt to bring some pre-existing campaigners mm -hmm. together. So you have people from tenants, residents, associations, or council estates, the short life housing co-op, you had homeless activists, squatters, and it actually came from a meeting in the pub. And it was quite, it became quite a conscious thing to bring existing campaigners, because some of them were really tired, been fighting for years, together to find ways that we could fight better together, but also overcome the barriers of different, different housing tenants around the principle that a house is a right, not a privilege. So if you're a private renter, you right to a decent house. If you're a council tenant, you've got a right to, you know, that, that idea cuts across the thing. And actually to work with each other, to a social solidarity in a local movement to actually make every campaign stronger. One of the, the different elements of how we do that, basically if any group has an idea or campaign, we publish, publicise it and support it. But beyond that, we started producing a newsletter with, um, which is printed by Unite, which enables us, we've done two so far, we've produced six or seven thousand of each, and we put them into, I don't know, one of them, one we put into 15 different estates. Basically, to take up different arguments. So the first one was the bedroom tax, the council, the rolled over a development, the second one focused more on tenant managed to say different elements and the next one's going to focus on private renters and housing association. And what that's doing is publicising fights, it's publicising the fact that there's people resisting, it's raising some of the ar arguments and we know it's not having an effect in the local area. We know the council is facing it, we know the council officers are facing it for the council. So we're beginning to set the terms of the thing. Another element to it is different groups doing this, the bit I'm involved in is the United Community and some of the CRAs is individual housing advi oh, no, advice sessions and so we took a joint approach with uh, training over four weeks for 15 people with a local yeah. tennis residents association at um, United Community working with the, the local law centre and now we have advice drop-ins on two estates at four, four sessions a week over the two estates and what that gives you is you begin to have people directing people to you on the estate and you sometimes will be doing nothing, reading people's letters for them saying no you haven't got a problem there, other times it was the bedroom tax but sometimes <coughs> it's a campaign and you get people who want to fight their thing and they'll they're prepared to take it for a while and so then you have the basis for a political campaign. We also have a relationship with the law centre where they say you're like a triage service for us and we have to do that. But also, if they get people that they can't help legally, they pass them back to us for the political campaign. So that's one of the other elements to it. The first thing has been, in the, in, the, in the context of the campaign that we do, is we try and sometimes pick the individual cases. So with the, the short life housing, when the first people came, raised the case with her woman who was, uh, they were trying to evict, she was like in re who'd been in re rehab, and while she was in rehab, she got notice of eviction. So we highlight that case, so I'll make it back online petitions, <coughs> so I get people in South Africa thirsty saying, this is outrageous, how does Lambeth Council? Suddenly they start getting embarrassed. In the end, we went down to the town hall and occupied it for two hours, demanding to see the head of the council, who had to come down and said, we'll take you to the meeting and discuss your case. She said, no, we'll do it in front of us. So 30 of us, had a meeting with the head of the council about this woman's case and, and she got up, she got housed in the next week. She wasn't evicted. And I said, I think last week or the week before, working with the other house, the hassle, there was a nurse five months pregnant that had been evicted by a, a housing association. Fifteen people go down to their head off. Two days later, she's back in the house. And the thing is, is what you find is with the smaller cases, is that you can win and, the, and, and it actually makes a difference because when we win the first battle, you tell people, say, what, what, you stop trying to get evicted. And it raises the confidence that actually that sort of solidarity actually works. And it makes the councillors and it makes the housing associations nervous because they now know that they're being watched. And what they do, the people come to the people say, oh, I phoned up and I said, I'm going to take it to the housing activists in the United Community. And suddenly things happen. And we become like, a bogey man for, for, for housing offices. And housing offices are another thing we're beginning to take up because you get this lack of respect that tenants, the people on benefits get. So all these things. So a lot of it is about following through individual cases <coughs> and where, seeing where that goes you in terms of campaigns. But it's building that network of solidarity and it's across tenure. So we, I think we do, I hope it's not just me speaking, 
but have a, of opposing a victim. And so you get people say, well, that victim's all right, that victim's not. No, actually, we all oppose, we'll support anybody who's fighting their eviction. It doesn't matter if it's private landlords, council, housing association. And you begin to learn the techniques that work. And some things we've tried haven't worked so well, and some things work better. But it's quite broad, it's quite open, and I think that's been part of this success, is that it's just gradually bedding in and getting a reputation. And we haven't really gone to make a big noise about it because um, you know, we have monthly meetings and all the rest of it, but the key is to us is action and actually trying to change the, the frame of the political debate. So the summer late and late thing, maybe sort of give it to developers. I'm not saying we change that, but we said it should be council housing. They've now gone for a 60-40, but the council's going to keep it, if that's very good. So it should be 100% council housing. And you just keep pressing. Do you know what I mean? This is ridiculous. You're saying you're building council houses. Why are you allowing stock transfers? You're beginning to raise the demand. Why can't housing association people who have been lied to in stock transfers? Because there's whole tens of thousands of tenants who were lied to about going over to housing associations. Why can't these tenants have the right to go back into council control? Do you know what I mean? Now people say that's mad. But why can't we put down that argument? If you're lied to by why, why can't you choose the freedom of choice to actually come to council tenants again? So that's really what we do, and some of it's been effective. Oh, the other thing was something is good just to, I think, for putting things on the map. map. It's like one of the things, because we've solved with home taxes, so this thing of land, one of six councils working with the Met Police to criminalise rough sleeping, homelessness, or whatever which is particularly <coughs> disgusting when these people are cutting funding for social housing and then criminalising the people who are put on the street. And it's, it's quite a hard thing to think how do you stop it, because it's sort of it's big, isn't it? So we just organised a little sleep-out process where we went outside Brixton Mix, lay down in, on cardboard boxes in sleeping bags and talked to the public. And it gets in the press, and everybody who walked past and stopped and talked to us disgusted that our council would be involved in something like that. And it was small, but people going, it's brilliant you're doing this. Things have to start small, and you have to build on it. And people get, and they like that people put up a resistance and put up a, a flag in the ground to say, no, this is out of order, you shouldn't be doing this. And councils hate that you're flagging it, and Boris hates that you go down to Harrington and City Hall to say, no, you shouldn't be doing this. And I think the more people who just stand up and fight little battles and network and try solidarity with each other, then the possibility seems more real. <laughs>